M.O.E. is on the beat Woo! What's the French toast? What the French toast? Woo! Haters mad and they still trying to do the most yeah. What the French toast? What the French toast? Ah. I ain't gotta brag, homie, I ain't gotta boast Call this beat Will Smith Cause it slaps hard yeah. Hear it not when I pull up on your boulevard yeah. Ain't got no rim spinning Ain't got no chain blinging yeah. But I got money, you can tell by all the hungry women yeah. Leveled up like I'm World 8 Mario uh -uh. You doing bad, homie? I don't feel sorry, bro uh -uh. 35 plus, still living with your mama uh -uh. So pop a home, boy, your whole life is drama I call you Tommy, cause you ain't got no job Ain't making money, ain't got no honey You looking bummy uh -uh. Said you wanna be an entrepreneur Money like four or five ways One day in Rome, the next day in Spain You post on Instagram all damn day With Folex watches and cash, that's fame Complain the girls won't give you no play Damn right they won't, you ain't got no game You claim they suck but still want that lay I'm pinky status, you ain't got no brain What the French toast? What, what the French toast? What? Brothers mad and they still trying to do the most What, what the French toast? What the French toast? Yeah. I ain't got a brag, homie Must have lost their mind They want to wait to have kids Till they 45 They got tricked into thinking They can just delay They got tricked into giving Lots of brothers play They got tricked into thinking They don't need a man They do it on their own They don't need no help in hand On every date She giving up her body But she's still single Cause she can't keep no she got trust issues She be ready to fight with her words and with her fist And she's so mad and she's pissed And she just blames men She don't look at her flaws Call her out, she just hymns and haws And says that you're a misogynist Kevin tried to help but he got dismissed What the French toast? What the French toast? Ladies mad and they still trying to do the most What the French toast? What the French toast? I ain't got a brag, baby Look, babe, you can go ahead and disagree with me all you want to, but what you're not going to do is curse at me. You better watch your tone. She talked that shame and so guilt and the need to be right. She talked that shame and so guilt and the need to be right. She talked that shame and so guilt and the need to be right. She talked that shame and so guilt and the need to be right. Yo, that's that sign language. 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 I can't stand that sign language. Yo, that's that sign language. Yo, that's that sign language. Yo, that's that sign language. Yo, here come a girl. Oh no, now she wanna fight again. I just wanna talk it out, I don't care who loses or wins Suddenly she wanna be the one to start yapping, yapping I'm sitting there still trying to figure out what the heck just happened I don't do this, I don't do that, did too much of this, not enough of that She on the attack, try to answer back, she ain't having that, now she says I'm whack I'm like, hold up, wait a minute, I know you live it, but insults you give it I ain't digging and I know but now she digging her heels in Said a girlfriend got a better man With a better job and a better plan And I'm making bread But it's more like crumbs Or just like a bone She won't give me none Till I straighten up And I'm looking at her like What the fuck French toast are you on? I 
point out that her girlfriend is in high debt and her better man is in jail again and got five kids and five other chicks in my car spade and I take us on vacay. But she don't care, no, she don't care. She just wanna complain. She talked that shame and so guilt and the need to be right. She talked that shame and so guilt and the need to be right. She talked that shame and so guilt and the need to be right. She talked that shame and so guilt and the need to be right. Yo, that's that sign language. 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 I can't stand that sign language. Yo, that's that sign language. Yo, that's that sign language. Yo, that's that sign language. Now what you trying to make me feel bad for? I ain't saying nothing to be sad for. I'm just trying to say my part. You just trying to tear me apart. Saying that I made you feel so mad, but I don't feel bad. Matter of fact, I laugh. You upset because I disagreed with the thought that you had OG. Different point of view wasn't being rude. Now you want to come insult me. Want to call me names, girl, don't start. That's just how I know that you lost. You lost. That KS was so smart and he's so right. You can't stand it when you know you lost a fight. So you switch the plan and insult your man and tell him that he ain't right. For making you feel unheard of then, out of nowhere, you start to cry. <laughs> Trying to get me into taking your side But I ain't saying nothing I should take back You just gonna have to be mad I can take that Homegirl thinking I'm a clown I don't play that Homie, I don't play that Girl, you talk that Shame, insults, guilt And the need to be right She talk that Shame, insults, guilt And the need to be right She talk that Shame, insults, guilt And the need to be right She talk that Shame, insults, guilt And the need to be right Yo, that's that sign language Yo, that's that sign language Yo, that's that sign language She fine, they're friendly, feminine, she divine They're friendly, feminine, she a dime They're friendly, feminine, you know the women I'm swimming in They fit friendly, feminine, and they mine They're friendly, feminine, she divine They're friendly, feminine, she a dime they friendly, feminine, you know the women I'm swimming in They're fit, friendly, feminine, and they mine Every time she walking by, she look fly She knows she's the apple of my eye Don't know why you even wanna try She's not in your range, homie, don't deny The way she moves, she got me hypnotized that slim waist got me all between her thighs She smells so damn sweet Got a perfume on me Such a tease we be rolling round all night I pay the bill every time we go to dine She volunteers to pay her half I'm like nah Heck no, I'm no simp Later on she gon' strip Call the girlfriend to join in They both fine they friendly, feminine, she divine They friendly, feminine, she a dime They friendly, feminine, you know the women I'm swimming in They fit friendly, feminine, and they mine They friendly, feminine, she divine They friendly, feminine, she a dime they friendly, feminine, you know the women I'm swimming in They're fit, friendly, feminine, and they mine She know, she know, she know, she want that bag I ain't no cheapo, but she know I do my part She looks so fine, she got a good heart She loves to cook us meals and clean my house And walk around with her bum hanging out And that cute little lingerie set that I bought And oh my god, I love the way 
way she knows how to speak to me When we disagree, her femininity Allows her to say her part Without making me feel dumb or tear me apart She's always thinking about my needs And my family's needs And what she can do to help me succeed A true partner in crime I'll be like, my, my, my Not to mention in the sack She attacked, got me flat on my back Now I'm jacked, hear that Give it to her like that Turn around, pin her down Face all up in her rap Feel a scratch on my back I Till I climax, crap That was way too fast Bounce back like I'm at Till she's finished like Then I'm like, my bad But girl, you way too fine Differently feminine, she divine Differently feminine, she a dime Differently feminine, you know the women I'm swimming in They fit friendly feminine and they mine Differently feminine, she divine Differently feminine, she a dime Differently feminine, you know the women I'm swimming in Fit, friendly, feminine, and they mine Yeah! Kevin Samuels was right, girl You got all three Fs that I'm looking for Know you made it Where my CIA's at Where your FBI's at Spin a dub like it's nothing You gon' make it right back Sign another contract That's money, money, money More money, more power, more Honeys, honeys, honeys When you walk in the room All they see is swag Nice suit, well groomed Ladies want you bad Got that real man cologne Ain't nobody spray Look her straight in the eyes Never look away She ain't jumped in no pool But she's feeling wet And by the end of the night You gon' make her sweat You ain't gotta say two words For people to know You a high value man Go steal the show You a high earning High value high class man You a high earning High value high class man You a high earning High value high class man You a high class man You a high class man You a high earning High value high High class man, you a high earning high value high class man. You a high earning high value high class man. You a high class man. You a high class man. If you's a high value man, you ain't gotta say it. And if you front like one, well they can tell you playing. Cause real recognize real. You don't look familiar. Brothers know you a joke. Ladies just don't feel ya. You don't work out. You don't got no style. No confidence at all And it's been a while since you had a lady friend Come and turn you out Cause you can't bring chicks over your mom's house Get your money up, get your mind right Go to therapy, get a sense of purpose in your life Stop spending all day in the red pill space With that red pill rage Straight hating on games Learn to communicate, stop being so needy The ladies will come, homie, please believe me Kevin Samuels was right Life gets much better If you step your game up and become a go-getter Step up! And if you already reached the top You a bad boy, but you can't stop, won't stop And if you've already reached the top You's a bad boy, but you can't stop, won't stop Let's You a high earning, high value, high class man You a high earning, high value, high class man You a high earning, high value, high class man You a high class man, you a high class man You a high earning, high value, high class man You a high earning, high value, high class man You a high earning, high value, high class man You a high class man, you a high class man Where my CIA's at? Where my CIA's at? Where my CIA's at? Where my CIA's at? Where your FBI's at? Where your FBI's at? Where your FBI's at? Where your FBI's at? Where my CIA's at? Where my CIA's at? Where my CIA's at? Where my CIA's at? Where your FBI's at? Where your FBI's at? Where your FBI's at? Where your FBI's at? Yeah, at CIA. 
confident, intelligent, assertive, FBI, feminine, beautiful, inspirational. I ain't trying to sit here and spell this out all day for y'all. I'm out of here. Are you tired of hitting roadblocks in your dating life? Join me for a free masterclass where I'll be revealing the three nice guy dating patterns that turn women off and what you should be doing instead. Unlock the secrets to creating genuine attraction. Click the link in the description to sign up now. It's the Introvert Dating Success Podcast, the show for introverted men that's all about learning how to attract beautiful women and still get your precious alone done. And now, here's your host, dating coach and fellow introvert, Harry Wilmington. Hey guys, welcome to the Introvert Dating Success Show. I'm your host as always, Harry Wilmington. This is the show where you learn how to date as your introverted self while still getting your precious alone time. Thank you all for joining me today. We have a great show lined there for you today. I have a lot of things I want to talk about, a lot of videos we're going to review, and of course, we're going to talk about our main topic, how to get her to commit when she's scared of love. Uh, I got the inspiration for this show because I was randomly listening to the radio the other day and I heard that weekend song come on with Ariana Grande called Die For You. And he, he quite often makes songs where at some point in the song he'll say, I know you're scared of love, which is why you won't get with me. And oh, you were hurt in the past. And so you can't face love. And I'm here to save you because I should be the one you love. And I think it's a fascinating concept that men think and feel that because women say, I'm afraid of love, that she it, that she actually means that. And I really want to go over in depth what women mean when they say that and how you can actually get some of these women to want to be in a relationship with you, even if they're saying initially, I don't know, I'm not for relationships, et cetera, et cetera. So we're going to get into all that, plus a bunch of other great stuff that I have to talk about. And in the midst of all this stuff that I have prepared for the show, this show is ultimately about you guys. So if you guys have any questions you want to ask me during the course of the show, I will be more than happy to answer them. Just put them in the chat and I will get to them at some point in time. Also, guys, uh, be sure to go to the introvertdatingsuccess.com website to check out my ebooks, audiobooks, programs, and of course, the free webinar that I talked that you saw mentioned earlier in the preview for the show. Uh, it is called Three Nice Guy Dating Patterns That Turn Women Off and What to Do Instead. So I've had a lot of people signing up for that webinar. I appreciate you all signing up and I hope that you're getting a lot of knowledge out of that webinar. Also, thank you to uh, whoever this week, I had a couple of people that uh, joined the Introvert Dating Success Academy and I wanna say thank you and I hope that you are also able to use that knowledge in that academy to get you from the, the dating phase of things all the way into a relationship. If you yourself watching this want to do that, Go to the website, click on the products tab, click on the IDS Academy, and you can look at what it has to offer and then join today. All right. So thank you guys for all that stuff. I got a new bottle today. It's a blue, nice little design on the front here. Somebody left it at my apartment and never claimed it. So I was like, oh, this is great. I'm going to use it because it keeps stuff cold. All right. So uh, we already have a question that has been left in the chat. And so I will go ahead and get to that question. So we have a guy that left the question in the chat. And his question is, what would you say about dating a one-year divorced woman who still has all the photos of her ex-husband on her public profile and is friends with the ex on all platforms? Well, I would need a bit more detail about what the entire situation is involved. Because do they have kids together? If so, then that would be a thing where it'd be understandable why she's staying in contact with this person. Um, outside of that, honestly, because for me, like I would imagine that a breakup and a divorce aren't quite the same thing with a divorce. She was with the guy a little bit longer. And so admittedly, it could be very hard for her to want to get rid of all these pictures. That said, I have dated uh, a few divorced women in my day and none of them had their ex guy on their profile in any past pictures, in any recent pictures, like at the point that they got divorced, 
And even it's too at the point they started dating me. Let's say they were dating me and they already and they and they like it's the first couple of months of dating, right? She, she's not sure who's where she's gonna go with who or what or what's gonna happen. So there's no telling if like me and her are gonna work out, right? At the point that that the women start thinking, oh crap, like me and Harry might actually get together. One of my requirements to get into a relationship is for them to not have pictures up of their ex in any capacity for them to not be in high contact with their exes, et cetera. So at the point that they come to me and they start asking, Hey, so what are we, are we going to be in a relationship? Yada, yada, yada. This is part of what I call the negotiation process. I talk about this extensively in the very last part of the introvert dating success Academy, which you should sign up for. But suffice to say, if there are things on there that you do not want her to have, you don't need to push her and say, well, don't, this is net. Just start asking questions. Hey, so you want to be, get together? Okay, great. So let me ask you a question. Do you currently have any pictures of your ex on social media or in your phone or in any other type of scenario where you could like review them regularly? And if she's like, well, you know, I, you know, I got a, I got a few pictures left of my thing. You just say, okay, great. You know what? Let's keep things the way they are. She'll probably ask you what you're talking about. It's like, well, you know, I'm not going to force you to do anything. Like if you want to have pictures of your ex up on your profile, Hey, you're in your right to do that. Let's keep things the way they are. And that'll let her know that that's a boundary, that you do not want her to be in contact with her ex and you do not want her to have pictures up. At that point, she has a decision to make. She can either come to you and say, but that's not a big deal, blah, 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 blah. At which point you say, hey, no harm, no foul. Let's just keep things the way they are. We don't have, have to call this relationship. You clearly still want to have your ex on your on your page and that's fine. We can just keep this like, you know, uh, friends with benefits. It, it, it ain't gotta be anything serious. Or she'll come to you, Hey, a few days later, like, hey, so, you know, I, I, I got rid of the pictures of my ex on the wall. <laughs> and then that'll let you know that she's super serious about being in a relationship with you. So ultimately, no, I would not date somebody that had pictures of photos with their ex. Aristotle was in contact with them at all, but I would not force them to change that. You can only tell them what you are and are not willing to accept. They can make the decision if based on what you're saying, if they wanna get rid of the pictures and stop talking to the ex to get with you, or if they wanna do what I wanna do because you can't tell me and you say, I'm not telling you to do anything. I'm just saying, let's keep things the way they are. So that's how I typically tend to handle things because we're, we're, we're grown ups. We're, we're, not in the, we're not in the habit of trying to force people to do nothing, right? And so many guys will be like, well, I'm gonna push her and tell her that she needs to say, you, she's a grown woman. She can make decisions. You can't tell her to do nothing. So. You can be mad about that, or you can just be like, well, let's just do what Harry said. And I get if you're really like interested in her and you want to get with her, that it can be hard to think of, think like, but wait, if I put that down, if I say that, there's a chance she might not want to go out with me. If that happens, it happens. Because if she's not willing to respect you by not crossing the boundary of continuing to keep pictures up of her ex and talk to him, then that's going to be a relationship that's doomed to fail in the first place. And you're, you waste your time in the long run. So it's better to make sure that this happens before you get in the relationship, because once you get in the relationship and agree to it at that point, you've now agreed to the terms that were already in, in place before you got into the relationship. One of those being she already had pictures of her ex. You didn't bring it up. You didn't say anything that made her think about getting rid of it. And so if you try to bring it up once you're in the relationship, now it's like, but that, why is that a big deal now? Like you didn't mention it earlier and she'll be in the right to say that because you didn't. So hopefully some of what I've said has helped you out and for, for you to keep us informed and updated on however that goes, you know? Also, also, uh, divorced women already have a uh, proof and example that they can't stay in a marriage. Whether she got rid of him or whether he got rid of her, the point is she wasn't able to stay in that for the duration and keep the vows of love and marriage for rich and for poor. So I would not put divorced women on the uh, higher part of your list of women that are available to date. There are plenty of well-to-do, available single women that have a good head on their shoulders and more importantly, do not have a divorce on their record. So also take that into consideration. All right. So with that said, I actually, for the first part of the show, I want to go over what I'm going to call advice from my audience. You know, I get a lot of great comments on my various videos and are saying, Harry, the advice you're giving is so great, whatever, you know, and I, and I appreciate that. But I also have some of you guys that leave comments that I think are actually helpful for other men to hear. And so I have four such comments that have been left on some of my various videos that I want to read to you guys because, hey, some of you guys have great insights into dating. Some of you guys have had your own experience that I think you could would benefit another guy hearing that. So 
we're going to do that real quick. Okay. So first off, I had a video that I did uh, with uh, Kevin Samuels where it said Kevin destroys this dude's approach game where he talks about, I, I, he talks about uh, this dude having like bad approach game to women. Right. And so a guy commented under that video and he said, very concise, my friend, we have our own confirmation biases, I guess. I also have fallen victim to the confirmation bias that all women want ballers. And you're absolutely right. There are plenty of women who don't care about having a rich guy or a lot of these superficial things. And that's that's absolutely true. You know, there's a if you watch enough Internet videos and enough of these other platforms where they talk about how women only want the six figure guy with the six pack abs and the six in the inches and the six car and all this other stuff. It, if you if you start to buy into that, it can be very easy to believe that women only want that. And that if you're not a guy that has those stats, then you're out of luck as a 510 African-American guy who has yet to make over $100,000 a year, I can assure you, I've dated some women that have more money than me, that have been willing, that had, that had a car when I didn't have a car, that were still willing to date me. Why? Because for women, even though those metrics seem important, you got to, I just, I just saw a story today uh, where they were talking about like all these uh, female correctional officers that are in male prisons that hook up with these guys. These guys that are in jail, that have next to nothing, that have done crimes. You know what I mean? And so this this proves and not that those not that, not wait, not saying that those women are well adjusted. But the point is, it goes to the fact that women on a variety of want a variety of things from a guy beyond just these figures, various figures. And you can see from your own from, from your own eyes in the media, there are plenty of billionaire, millionaire guys that lose their women. Uh, I just saw the story today with uh, G, uh, young Jeezy and Jenny May. Jenny uh, May are going through it in the divorce court now. Like, regardless of how that situation was, they could not stand each other enough to stay together in spite of all the money and all the things afforded to them. Okay. So, yeah, this guy's absolutely right is that there are plenty of women out there that don't care about you being uber rich or having all these superficial things. They just want to know that they're with a guy that's going to care about them, that they can trust, that they can have a good time with, you know? So, that's, that's very, very important to recognize. So then we have another guy that left a comment under my uh, play the field or going the relationship route video. And he commented, you can't date constantly thinking, quote, I might find an upgrade so I won't commit. It's not right for you and the other person. You're always going to be stuck in that loop of never being satisfied and always wanting something more. You have to take a step back and be grateful for what you have. If the person you're dating is treating you well, you're treating them well, the attraction is there, et cetera, it feels healthy, arguments are minimal, you both find ways to figure out problems, then that's how you know that person is for you. Because otherwise, those things would not be happening and it wouldn't work out. If she's truly got your back, then the only reason to leave her is, quote, to find someone hotter and younger, which is not a valid reason. You're fooling yourself thinking you can, quote, do better when you already have someone awesome. No point in even risking it to find out. And that's the thing that that's that's very true, is that I think we both men and women get to this idea that, you know, things are kind of going great in the relationship and things are coasting along, but there could be better. Like, like she's a solid eight, but I could get a nine or she has like 80% of what I want, but could I find 85%? I've just found as you get older, the answer is no. Like if there's going to be a plateau where you find that one person that like has about 82% of what you want, they might not be like a 10 on the, on the one to 10 scale in terms of looks ratings. They might be like a five or a six or a seven, but they do all those other stuff great. They get along with your family. They know how to do things for you that nobody else would ever do. And at that point, you got a decision to make. And the decision is, do I risk what I have right now? Like you got you to think of like poker. I have a good, pretty solid hand right now. I have like, you know, a nine, a 10, a jack, a king, a queen. Do I want to risk that for possibly getting a, a row of cards with an ace? And you're going to find more often than not, you're not going to come across that. Like, I'm sorry to brush the rubble, guys. It doesn't get better, 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 better every time. And it gets better, 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 plateau. And then you got a decision to make. And you might, you might decide, I'm going to stay with this person. And then you see somebody down the street one day that looks like they could conceivably be that 85 or 90%. I can assure you, you don't know them enough yet to know that when you, if you dump the girl you're with now to get with that one, she actually shell wise looks like 85%, but it's more like 60%. All right. So yeah, you got to decide at some point and you got to look at what metrics do you need? And are you getting enough of those metrics with the person you're currently with to really settle down with them versus hoping that the next person comes along, has those same stat, stats and maybe a little bit better. So yeah, I agree with this guy completely. Uh, next up here. Somebody left a comment under my girls I don't like want me, girls I like don't want me, why uh, video. 
And then he says, yes, I think an important subject men often forget about in dating is free will. Just because you choose to like a woman does not mean she also feels the same. Your ego is saying, I can't believe this girl I, I picked cannot see how awesome of a guy I am. Let me try extra hard, which is going against her free will. The more pressure you apply, the more you're not allowing her to choose you, the more she will avoid and resent you. This usually causes men to go deeper thinking she needs to wake up. This never, ever works. And these same men would also hate being forced to date a woman they're not interested in. Why do you believe women also don't have preferences and choices? And that's what I try to get. You know, I, I sometimes I get some some pushback from guys like, you know, you know, Harry, you you're you're saying it's all in the men's thing to to be more responsible and this and that. I'm just trying to let you guys get you guys to understand that you can't be so butt hurt when women don't choose you because just like you have free will, they have free will. And sometimes, as well meaning of a guy as you are, and as a, much of a nice guy as you think you are. You could be nice and be willing to support her and be there for her. And she could still say at the end of the day, but I'm just not quite feeling it. And yeah, women have the free will to do that. Just like we have the free will to be like, hey, this chick's using my money and I don't like that. So I'm going to leave her. But you should be supportive because I'm a woman, blah, blah, blah. But I, I can leave that situation. I have the right to do that, you know? So the, 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 but this also goes to if you have more of an abundance mindset and you put yourself out there to where you know you can date more types of women, then you won't be so stuck on this one having to work. You know, and that's the thing. I think a lot of guys think that if I don't make this one work, I'll never find anybody again. And hey, in my early 20s, I thought the same way about every single girl that I had a crush on. This one has to work out. Oh, woe is me. She's not choosing me, but I'm such a great guy. I'll never find anybody. And then like three months later, oh, I got a crush on this one now. Oh my God, she won't get with me. Oh, this is never going to be great for me. And I get it. After a lot of... um losses in the dating game, it can start, you start to believe that like, it's it's just never going to happen for you. But the reality is, yeah, there's probably going to be a high amount of losses regardless, because you only need one person to make it work. So even if you get with somebody in the moment, oh man, I got a girlfriend. Two years later, you break up. It didn't work. Whether, whether it didn't work when you first try to pick her up or didn't work later, it, it inevitably in the dating world, it's you get somebody, you hope the guy's going to work out. It probably doesn't. And then inevitably, you find somebody to work it out with long term, you know? And so within that process, you have to let women come and go if, as they please. You try to hold on to them and make them feel like a prisoner is not going to make them want to like you even more, you know? So I totally agree with that person's comment as well. And then this last comment here was left under my modern women psychologist says my texting advice is crap because she didn't agree with the whole like, uh, you know, wait four days between dates to text a woman. She's very much like, oh my God, that's playing games and blah, 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 blah. And I've explained plenty of times why that's actually beneficial to women. Obviously she didn't agree. It is what it is. But anyway, in that video though, I said, hey, ultimately guy, whether you want to listen to her or listen to me, like you need to be doing your due diligence. Whatever advice I'm giving you, don't just follow it blindly, go out there in the world, test it out, see what works, her advice or my advice, and then come back and say, hey, I, based on what I, my experience was, I agree with this person's advice, you know? But this person said, uh, Harry knows what he's talking about. You can apologize for being too cold, uh, responsibility and priorities will never lose a woman's interest. You cannot apologize for being too hot, needy, desperate, annoying with attention. The first few months, less communication is always better. Exactly. Whether you're in a relationship or marriage, more communication is fine. Oh, when you're in a relationship. Uh, too much attention early on shows you dropped your actual life responsibilities for a woman you barely know. Why would you suddenly prioritize a person you've only known for a week? Simply because you're horny or desperate, no woman is attracted to that. I've also done several approaches, had several dates, and many failures. This all led me to a happy engagement. This all taught me a huge lesson to bring back more energy and attention to myself instead of trying to place it in another person. Yes, you eventually have to care and do things for the other person, but you cannot take care of a spouse or a family if you don't care about or take care of yourself first. And that's all I'm saying, guys, is that in the beginning of dating somebody, you have to make them earn some of your attentions. So that way it feels like it's valid that you're giving it to them versus what a lot of guys try to do is they want to text nonstop, call nonstop, hang out nonstop. And that doesn't let the women, the woman feel like it's being earned, which means in turn, she's thinking, how is it that I'm so great that I deserve all this attention 
what's going on. And then she starts looking at your actions that you think are totally fine as needy and desperate and annoying. And so, yeah, you have to let women, you have to let women get a break from you at times in order to sit with themselves and think about wanting to be with you, which is why I say wait a minimum of four days between days to initiate a phone call or a text to ask her for another date because you're actually doing her a favor. You're doing her a favor by letting her sit with her own brain and letting her talk about you to her girlfriends. And all this does is keep you on her mind, which will make her think, gee, if I'm thinking about this guy and wanting him to contact me, it must be because he likes me. And women need you to do that because the opposite is her saying to you on the third date, I don't know, just things are moving too fast. And, you know, I, I just think we should just be friends. Now you're gonna be thinking, but I didn't play games. I contacted her as soon as she contacted me. Hey, you can do dating however you want to. I'm just saying from personal experience, including this guy agrees with me that all this communication in the beginning is not doing you a favor. It's doing you a disservice and consider curtailing that so you get better results. So thank you to the four guys that left comments. And also guys, if you guys have uh, advice you guys wanna leave, on my comment sections as well. I will read them on the show because I think ultimately guys helping guys out to get insights into this stuff as proof that it works and as proof that there's a different way to go to do about dating is always helpful. And for those of you guys that want to do a real deep dive, you can go to introvertdatingsuccess.com, sign up for my programs, get my eBooks, and of course, sign up for one-on-one -on -one coaching with yours truly. I would love to help you. All right. Uh, I got a couple of comments in the chat here. Uh, see, makes me sad when men say that. I don't know what that is. Probably something I said here. He said, saw one of the sweetest girls get their heart shattered from a guy like that. Uh, you have to be more specific because I don't know when you said that because that part of the screen was covered for me. Uh, but anyway, so with that said, let's get on to some videos. So I was going to do a full show about how women test men. And I think I'm going to probably do that show next week. Uh, I was doing a lot of stuff today and I forgot that was, I, 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 the, the weekend thing happened. I was like, oh crap, I got to talk about this. So in the midst of that, I forgot to do that show, but I did want to do this particular thing. So I don't know if you guys have heard of this thing on TikTok called the orange peel test. It is a test that's been going around and I saw a bunch of videos on it. I couldn't put them all here because I'd be on here all day showing you a bunch of videos, but in short, here is the, this is the new test that women are doing to try to test the person they're dating or their boyfriend or their spouse to see if they are, in fact, a good significant other. And so here's the test, right? Basically, a woman will ask her guy to get her an orange and then will ask him to peel the orange. And depending on what his response is. It determines if he's a, a good boyfriend or a bad boyfriend, right? Now, one of the things that I'll probably go over extensively in the, the uh, testing show is that, let's face it, guys, we get annoyed by women's tests, right? Like, we're like, why can't they be more straightforward? Why can't they just tell us a thing? Why can't they ask us how we are and we would just tell them? Here's what I've learned in the dating world, right? And especially about women in particular, is that most of the time, women in their past have done this. They've asked the man directly some questions about how they would respond to situations or what they would say at certain situations or whatever. And guys will straight up like be, they'll give the answer that sounds politically correct. So for example, like if a woman asked me, hey, so like if we got into an argument, would you like stonewall and like walk out the room? And I'd be like, oh, of course not. Like I wouldn't do that. I would totally be there and talk to you and hear everything you have to say, blah, 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 blah. Okay. But in my past, there were definitely times where when a woman had a had a situation with me or had an argument or disagreement, I would stonewall. I would not say anything. I would leave and come back later. I had to learn that wasn't a good way to be. But the point is, if she had asked me point blank, if that's how I would respond, the answer would have been no, of course not, because I would think I'm better than that. And so there is a reasoning at times behind why women test. They're testing for things like that to see if they, they, they recognize if they ask you directly about the thing they're trying to test for, you're probably going to give them a BS answer or some kind of lie. And so it's better for them, for the purposes of their safety, to sometimes do things that let a test happen to see in real time how you would actually respond so they can make a determination about that, right? So I'm going to show you a couple of videos here of what the orange peel test here looks like. And we'll start with this lady right here. Let me just uh, make sure I get my things set over here. So I'm going to add this to the stage. So... Okay. This first lady okay. is going to ask her boyfriend, uh, or I think it's her asking her husband to do the orange peel test. Now, none of these guys know that they're being tested, okay? So these women had their cameras all weird. And also, I want to make disclaimer, obviously in today's world, people could be doing skits 
and we might not be able to tell if it's a skit or if it's something that's happening in real time. And what I say is that even if it's hypothetically a skit, skits are based on reactions in situations that have gone on in the real world. So whether you see a guy doing the test and passing it or, you know, outright flailing, flailing his arms and yelling at his girl, even if it's a skit, I've seen examples of these things in real life when they're not skits. And these reactions in these videos are similar, whether they're skits or not. All right, so let's go ahead and get into it. This is the first lady. You're brave, you're strong, and you're powerful. You're also cute, which is a weapon. He's talking to his dog. Babe, I was going to wait until after dinner, but I'm kind, I kind of want an orange. Okay. But the cu the cutie is fine. There's a husband in the background. A cutie for a cutie. So you can see she's being very inconspicuous with the camera. Like she's trying to turn it so, because he just walked in the room. So we're going to assume he doesn't know what's actually going on here. Should I try a piece to make sure it's not poison? Ow! I just a little, got a crick in my neck. Maybe a little slitty just to make sure, you know? Slitty bitty. Alright. I'm gonna like that. Thank you. Welcome. Thank you. That's it? That's the test, right? That's that's the test. So so that's that's a, an example of the 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 orange peel test. Test with flying colors. She asked him for the orange, and he just went and did it. Now, one could say like, "Oh my God, the way he's acting it towards her, he's such a simple blah 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 blah." Look, they're married. Realistically, at the point that you get into a long term relationship, you guys are probably going to simp for each other at some point. You're going to ask her to do some stuff that you could easily do, and she's going to be like, "Oh, no problem, sweetie." And that's what you want. You want a partner that's going to be easygoing and not be the kind of partner that's going to be like, "Oh, why should I do that? This is slave labor. How dare you!" Like having a partner like that is annoying and frustrating, and it's not worth the time and energy. All right, so we're not going to fault this guy. Yes, he could have been dressed a little bit better because he was dressed kind of slubbish. And oh, should I feed it to you? Like we could say that's simp behavior. Again, they're married. I imagine it's probably been for a while. Like, and it seems like based on just the energy of that, like the energy of that video was like they are truly happy together. Like that's a good feeling. You want to have that feeling, right? So now we're going to show you an example of a guy that let's just say in terms of. Uh, we're doing the, the the test here. He's not exactly doing the best job at showing uh, his girl the affection that she's looking for in this test, all right? So first of all, you can see her. Her face, she has a different face than the last girl. She already has the face of like, I already know where this is going to go, but we got to do it anyway. Here we go. Babe, since you're up, can you give me an orange from the fridge, please? The fuck do I look like getting you Just, you you're already up. Pause. Now again. This could be real life. This could be a skit. But I know people. I have seen people do this where like every time their girl tries to say something to them, it's like, or try to give them a, an idea that's different from theirs. It's like, what the F you mean? Like, oh, you're stupid. So stupid. Like that kind of language is pervasive through several relationships. And so whether you're a guy or a girl, if you have a, a person that's talking to you on the other end like this, when you're just trying to have a conversation, you're in a toxic relationship. Get out. Can I please have an orange? All right, bro. Please don't call your girl bra, guys. Don't do not do that. Bro, you could have just handed it to me like a normal person. Why are you being you rude? You got your fucking orange. Shut up. So he threw the orange at her, and then he said, shut the F up. You got your orange. So he's being very disrespectful and demeaning to her, right? Now, she didn't do this test with him early on in the relationship. They've been in a relationship for a while now. So it's like, imagine if she'd done this in the beginning. For one... Let's face it, guys. We put in a good front game. He probably wouldn't have done like this in the beginning, but at some point, she could have tried to test some other things that would have allowed her to really see his true colors shine through versus now they're in a relationship, and now this is the behavior that she slowly got accustomed to to where now it's like she's not aware that this guy's – well, she's probably aware she's being toxic, but it's like she's on – the the TikTok here trying to show the, the other girls out there, hey, I got a good guy, and he is like – Miserably failing. And also understand this too, guys, that women in part want to be able to go to their girlfriends and say, oh, I have such a great guy. He's so great. I asked him for an orange the other day and he peeled it for me. And just, it was just, he's just so loving to me versus like, uh, well, they probably don't want to talk about it. So they won't because they don't want the girlfriends to know that the guy they have at home is toxic and is throwing oranges at them. You know what I mean? Babe, since you're up, can you give me an orange? 
Okay, but I need you to do something else for me. What? Do you love me? Sometimes. Okay, I need you to peel this for me because I have my nails on and peel I don't want it to get under my nails. Orange, bro, Please, can you come peel it, it for me? Peel it, I know, but I just told you why I can't. So what he's doing now is what a lot of guys do. Again, whether it's a skit or not, a lot of guys, when a woman makes a request of something, they'll try to throw in logic as if to say, if I give you a logical reason why I don't need to do this thing, then you'll understand it and then you'll do it yourself. Women aren't looking for logical answers. They're looking for if you have an emotional connection enough to where when she makes a simple request of you, are you willing to help her out? Even in this case, she's like, hey, I just got my nails done. I know as a guy that's dated a lot of women, if they get their nails done, they ain't trying to do nothing with their hands that involves in grabbing things or scratching things or whatever. So as a guy, if my woman came home when they say, hey, I just got my nails done. And then later on, she's like, hey, can you give me an orange? I would just assume that it's probably better for me to peel it because she just got all this work done on her nails, you know? So you gotta be emotionally intelligent, guys. Can you pretty please? What, pretty please? Like Can you baby? please? I'm your maid. I do your laundry. I cook for you. I do your dishes that you leave all over the damn house. Just come peel my orange, please. Oh, oh. And here's, and here's what's really happening too, right? Is that women are aware that when they come to a relationship and they really care for you, they might not call call you out on it or they might not you know, try to bring it to your attention about the amount of stuff they're actually doing. Like if you're dating a great enough woman, you have a woman that will cook for you, that will clean for you, that will wash your dirty drawers, that will make surprises for you, that will write to your mom on a holiday when you forgot to send her a card. Like the list goes on and on and on of the subtle things that women will do that either you take, uh, you don't, you take not take advantage of but you're not taking stock of or that you're not appreciating you know and so yeah when she comes to you one day it's like hey can you like go to the grocery store and get me like an orange and you're like i don't want to do that she's thinking back on like the rolodex of all the things she did for you that she didn't try to ask a thank you for that she didn't feel the need to thank her for and now she's like but dude i just did all this stuff for you and you can't just open you, you can't do something as simple as peel a darn orange so she's totally understandably right in this situation are you serious? You're not about to come peel my orange. I got better things to do than peel a damn orange for you. Like what? Have a bromance on the game with your brass? Yeah. Fortnite? I'm gonna hop on Madden? Yeah. Uh, see, now she, so now she's doing a thing where she's being snippy at him because she, he's not doing what she wants him to do. And so as a guy, that's something you can test out early in the relationship when like, if you don't call her right away or text her right away, how she responded. Because granted, he started the train by, you know, not treating her fairly. So assuming you are a guy that is treating women fairly, if they start doing stuff like this, like they're mocking you or making fun of you like this, like I've literally had women that I'm doing all the things for and then they want to say some like insulting thing to me where I'm just like, whoa, like we can stop this right now. Like I'm not playing that. And you have to use the guy, have to stand up for yourself when that happens. But in this case, I get why she's doing it. He's not in the right. She's not in the right in this. But you got to understand women follow your lead. If you start the insult train, you can't be mad when she decides to insult back later and be like, oh my God, how dare you? Like, this is why as a guy, you gotta be mindful of what you're saying and speaking to women and try to speak positives versus treating them negatively. That's why you lose every night anyway. Oh, Come peel my damn orange. Damn Come peel my orange. Fuck no. Do you even love me anymore? Do you yeah, even wanna be in this relationship yeah, anymore? So you, you can't even peel an orange for me? I don't love you when you ask me to peel a damn orange for you. That's why I caught it. Here, take the damn orange back. I don't even want it anymore. Okay. Well, so yeah, she seemed very, very upset by that. And it's sad because again, it takes all the like, what, 30 seconds of your time. You know, it's interesting as men, we meet women and then we think, man, I want to get with her. I want to treat her well. I'm going to be her superhero. And then fast forward six months later, we got the girl. We done hooked up with her plenty of times. You're like, eh. And then you can still, if you're not paying attention, you're going to start slowly like taking less care of her. And then you become the person that's attacking her and not doing things for her that you were doing in the beginning. And women are looking for consistency. So going from like, I'm going to do things for you that no other guy would to like treat her like all the previous exes did. That's a serious problem for women, you know? So, but anyway, he clearly failed the orange peel test there, right? Now, here's what's, here's a, the third video I'm going to show about this. And this is really important right here too. I'm going to add this to the stage real quick. I'll see, do this here and add this one. So here's why something like the orange peel test is important. And as the guys, it seems silly. Why is she testing us? Whatever. This is a woman that is in a relationship with her husband, obviously. And, but for, they had a lot of turmoil for a lot of years and things weren't going so great, you know? And so 
you'll see in the video she mentions this, but like there was a time where things were so bad that were she to ask him to do something as simple as peel an orange, like it would cause her to be anxious and nervous and he probably wouldn't do it because they were fighting so much, right? So now she's trying to use this test as a barometer for where her relationship currently is with her husband, all right? I may have to turn the sound down on this at times because, you know, music in the background, but take a watch. Just read the read the stuff on screen. So she says, this orange peel theory trend made me so nervous. <laughs> So she's sitting there. She's not asking yet, but she's looking at her. She's looking around. She's got the orange in her hand. She says, because there was a point in our marriage where I know he wouldn't have peeled my orange. You can see my hesitation. You see, she's already like anxious. She's starting to like worry about what's going to happen next. So she asked him. She gives it to him. He said yes with no hesitation. And the kid in the background's like, I'll peel your orange, mama. And she wants to be able to say that. She wants to be able to say, my man is going to do this task for me that, I, although it's simple, it's a task that in his way is showing that he actually cares about me. Freaking sappy music. We're waiting for the orange to come back. At this moment, I felt so happy. We've come so far in our marriage. And for him to do this small gesture with no hesitation means everything. Look at, this is what women are going for, guys. The smile on the face right here. This is all it reads. All women want to do is be able to look at the guy and have the smile that says, I know he's going to take care of me and be there for me, just like I'm there for him. That's all they're mostly, the, the women that are truly out there that are the good women, this is what they're truly looking for. <laughs> And, that, and look at that. That's all she wanted to do. She just wanted him to pass the test as a means of showing that they're in a good space in their relationship, you know? And so, yeah, this is why you guys, I, I know it can be frustrating. Sometimes women are going to do things and you're like, am I being tested right now? Or you find out you were part of a test and you're like, what's going on? And you're thinking to yourself, why are they even doing this in the first place? Well, they're doing it for a lot of reasons, but I actually have this final video here. This woman actually talks about why it is that women test you in the first place. Why do women test you? More often than not, women are giving you tests that they want you to pass. They're gonna do things that are gonna test your masculinity. They wanna make sure that you're going to outshine all of the other men she's ever been on a date with. Women test you without even realizing it. And I try to stress that too, because a lot of you guys think women are, for the most part, consciously coming to you and saying, okay, we're on a date now, I'm gonna test him. So much of this stuff is just subconsciously ingrained in them to test for as a means of testing for safety, testing to see if they can trust you, if you'll be there for them, to where you figure women have been getting trained since they were kids about being in relationships and caring people. And then part of it's like genetically ingrained in them. So when they come to you, it's not, and I've, I've explained this to women too, it's like, I don't think that they're inherently always purposely testing us. I think a situation comes up where they ask us to do a thing and then, or, or something comes up where like we do something where say it breaks their trust, right? And now they're like, huh, interesting. I wonder how he reacted in other situations. And now because of a thing that we unintentionally did, now they have to go through all this whole testing thing, you know? And that's a lot of times how this starts up. But anyway, we'll see what she says. Here's two examples. First one is pretty common when you're out at a bar. She asks you to buy her a drink. Are you just an average man who's gonna buy her a free drink? Or are you gonna stand your ground and show her your masculine discipline? The best way to pass this test is to drop her into her femininity and say, sure. After you buy the first round, I'll get us the next couple. This will earn her respect and establish your masculinity. And also, also in that particular situation, it's also flirty as heck. Like, cause she's been in the practice of every guy, every time I go to the bar, I just ask a guy to get me a drink and they, oh sure princess, I'll get you a drink. <laughs> and then they want to hang around her all night because they got her a drink and women do this nonstop. Now me, I've never bought a woman a drink at a bar. Like unless it's a girl that I'm actually in a relationship with more often than, or if like I'm on a date with obviously, but like if I, if I just go to a random bar or a club or whatever and like, hey, buy me a drink. I have found, I've been able to actually get women to buy me drinks. Now the secret was at the time, and, and even actually now I wasn't a big drinker. So I had no problem going up to a bar and then being like, I don't want anything to drink. I find that doing that, women like want to 
get you to drink. Like if I, if I go up to a bar, it's like, hey, what are you drinking on? I'm drinking a such and such and such. I said, oh, it looks good, but I don't know if I want to drink anything tonight. Oh, you don't want to drink anything. You got to try my drink here. Bartender, get him a drink. So I found just by like acting like I'm not a big drinker, women will buy her drinks. That's a solid tip from me to you. So if you like that tip, give it a like on the video and get, go to Dollar Sign Harry Wilmington and give me a cash app. But anyway, so suffice to say though, it's like, yeah, if you're acting like every other guy, then, and you do that, then you failed the test. Versus me, that guy, it's like, you know what? You want me to buy you a drink? <laughs> what are you gonna do for it? Like, now you're playing a fun, flirty game with her. And then again, you can say like, well, you know what? Here's the thing, okay? I'll get you a drink after you get me a drink or after you introduce them to your friend or after you, like, you make it fun for them versus like, oh, get a drink. Now you're making it look like you're vying to get her attention and attraction and you're gonna lose. Number two asking what are your thoughts on politics or something else controversial most men will dodge answering sensitive questions like this because they're scared of confrontation or saying the wrong thing to a beautiful woman so he's also scared that if he starts a disagreement he's gonna lose her to pass this test a man must be confident confident in giving his opinion even if it doesn't align with her opinion the key point of disagreeing with a woman is to do it in a fun and flirty way without getting emotional and not being afraid of how she's gonna respond and that's the key right there is being able to disagree with her in a fun, flirty way because women don't want boring conversations. If you want to steer clear of having a boring conversation with a woman, not that you're doing this on purpose, but if she brings out a topic that's controversial or like a subject matter that's controversial, like I said, religion, politics, a bunch of other things, whatever, right? Like most guys will try to play it safe. Oh, well, you know, I like, are you, do you agree with the Republicans or Democrats? Oh, well, you know, I think both sides have a, a good and pros and cons and negatives and this, this, and that. You're not being a decisive man. Versus being a guy, it's like, oh, you know what? I actually agree with this side more. And uh, here's why. She might be like, oh, how could you? I'm so offended. Oh, what the fuck? Up? But then that allows a dialogue. And for women, it's more, the, the, here's the thing, because the, the guys don't get, right? For them, for women, the conversation, it's not about the logical answers. It's about the emotions that she's being allowed to feel in a conversation with a guy. So if you disagree with her, she might initially feel angry. And then as you're explaining your reasoning, she might still disagree, but she's like now having a fight to try to prove why she's right, which is making her feel like she can be that person that changes your mind. And then you make a crack a joke about her thought process. And now you got her laughing because even though she doesn't agree with you, what you said was funny. So now she's ha ha laughing. And then you tell a story about, you know, why you agree with this particular person and how they saved your family. And she's like, oh, now she's telling a sad story. All these emotions. That that's a more interesting conversation to a woman than, well, I mean, whatever you say, I agree with that too. Or, well, I mean, it could be both, whatever, like that's not fun, you know? So, but this is, this is an example of why women test you because they're trying to test to see what kind of personality fit you have. They're trying to see where you are in terms of you being emotionally intelligent and being emotionally stable in terms of you having your own opinions versus you agreeing with hers. Like there's a lot of decent reasons why women would consciously or subconsciously test you, you know? So just be mindful that, as you go in your dating world, that if a woman is testing you, like she said, she women want you to pass the test. A woman would not try to test you if she did not see you as a potential viable candidate to be in a relationship with, all right? So that's just something to consider. Again, I will show more examples of tests that women do in terms of testing on a later show where I give a lot more examples of other ways that women test you, all right? But hopefully for now, guys, that helps you out. Ow. So with that said, we got a question in the chat. And the question goes... Uh, the girl I've been talking about has been texting me literally all week. I know that I know that can kill attraction and I'm not prioritizing her, but I need a way to get her to not text me so she doesn't make herself not like me anymore by accident. And she didn't say yes to dates, asked her twice, like a month and a half ago. But to be fair, we met we we met her online and she didn't really know me then. Should I ask again? So you also asked because this is the January show, if you're watching this later on, a month ago is December. December is like the worst time to ask people out because the holidays are around, which means that she probably has other priorities going on. And even if she doesn't, she's probably hanging with family, with friends or whatever like that. Like it's, it's a really hard time to really get to know anybody in a relationship, which is why I typically err on the side of like pushing stuff to the new year, you know? Now, in terms of her texting every day, but not going out, there's a few things happening here, guys. So pay attention, right? So first off, uh, I would say yes. I would say at some point, ask her out again. But here's the thing. Sometimes women, once they start texting you a lot, they will get to where they like the attention that they're getting because you're they're, they're able to text you and get a response. And they could do that all day without having any desire to 
actually like get with you or see you in person. Now, in this situation, I'm going to say for now, we don't necessarily know if that's the case. We're going to assume she was busy in December and that maybe she just, that wasn't the time to ask her out. But this is why I typically err on the side of you ask women out like two times. You said you asked her out, um, you asked her out twice. So you're already kind of on Rocky waters because like you asked her out twice. She said she didn't say yes twice. So that's already kind of a danger zone thing. But just to, so your brain will get it, I would say try to ask her out one more time. Key thing, don't ask her out for a Friday or Saturday. I've gone into why that is, but suffice to say, Friday and Saturdays are days that are reserved for couples. You're not a couple yet. So try to say Sunday through Thursday. Point of the matter is, at some point, just say, hey, we should meet up to do, I don't know, it's wintertime. I don't know where you live. So might do like a movie, might do dinner, might do bowling or something like that. Just something, hey, let's meet up and do this and have some fun together, whatever, and see what that, that goes on, right? In terms of her texting every day, the main thing is this, is that it's not good for you as the guy to be initiating text all the time. We want the woman to be coming to you to do more text because that means, in effect, she is chasing you. And if she's chasing you, she can't be replacing you. So at the point that she's texting you, that's not the bad part. But you can be the guy that doesn't have to answer every single time. You can be the guy that actually has other stuff going on to whereby you're not always available. The thing for us though is we feel as though if we don't answer back right away, we're hurting her feelings. She's going to get mad at us. Oh, my God. I say it like this. If she gets mad at you for not answering a couple of texts here and there, that is your way of testing whether or not she has a good head on her shoulders and if she's emotionally stable. A woman that's going to get mad at you for not sporadically texting her here and there is a woman that you do not want to deal with long term. Because I'll tell you now, in the adult, in the real world, once you get older and you become an adult, you have stuff to do. Like I have days where like, like I do this show right now. If a woman's texting me or call me during this show and I can't answer, I don't need her to be mad at me for having a show that I'm doing, nor do I feel to go get off the show and be like, I'm so sorry I couldn't text you. I was doing a show and please forgive me. Like, you don't want to be in that kind of relationship. So don't feel bad about not texting her all the time. If she's coming to you and over texting, that's totally fine. She's showing she's interested. It is what it is. And then at some point in time, you ask her on a date. Again, your job for initiating text should not be to just have a freely conversation. Your job should be specifically to get a date. So She's texting you, hey, so-and-so, what's going on today? Hope you have a great day at, at whatever you're doing, blah, 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 blah. At some point, hey, great to hear from you, this is net. Hey, you know what? Um, I'm busy right now, but we should go out sometime next week. Let me know if you're free on this day or this day. And then see what she says. If she tries to like push off the conversation of saying yes to a date or tries to move it to something else that doesn't involve you going on a date, then that is your answer. Because inaction is an answer. Her not showing up is an answer. Her not saying yes to a date is an answer. Women will rarely, will rarely ever say, no, I don't want to. They'll say stuff like, oh, I'm busy. Oh, I got stuff going on. Oh my God. Like, I wish I could see you, but oh my God. And, and so all that stuff means no. So it's either going to be yes, and they set a time, or it's going to be all these other answers that mean no. Anytime you're not getting a yes, assume it's a no. If you get a maybe, assume it's a no. Until you get that concrete yes, it is a no. And if you ask out a third time, then it is what it is, you know? Uh, he says, thanks, understood, thanks. I haven't been initiating almost ever. So the takeaway is ask her out and respond to her text most of the time. Well, again, you, you answer at your leisure. Like realistically, if you're busy at a time that she texts, don't feel like you got to text back right away. You know, if you happen to be available when she texts you, then it's perfectly fine to respond back. But again, and, and when you're texting people, like it's a one-to-one -one ratio. Like she sends a text, you send one text back. As a guy, you cannot get away with double texting triple texting, you also cannot get away with paragraph texting. Meaning like, if you notice that when you're typing a thing out, it's going to like four or five lines, you've texted too much, curtail it back. Most of your, because most of what you should be texting anyway is like, hey, let's go out or respond to what she's saying. You shouldn't be having to give out full paragraph long stories because that just doesn't look good on the women's side of things, you know? So hopefully that answers your question and hopefully it helps you out. All right, so let's see what else got on my docket here. Okay, so we're about to get into um, a woman gives up the female playbook. All right, so I saw another couple set of TikToks from this lady on here on, on TikTok, and this lady is giving up the game. You know, I think as a guy, it is very, very important to not only understand, obviously, advice like mine and like what you as a guy can do, it's also good to know what women are telling other women and how women are functioning on the other side of the game, right? So there's a woman on here that actually is giving up the game to men about how women, when women say certain things, what they actually mean and what they do and stuff like that. So for this first video, check get this right here. This first video, she's talking about girl language. This is what women talk about. This is what women, when women say this thing, 
This is what they actually mean. I've done a few videos like this, but I think it's important for you to hear from a woman's mouth that when they say these things, this means they probably have little to no interest in you, all right? And it's important because I think, you know, I think guys don't like the idea of like, a woman saying or doing things to not want them and just versus telling them straight to their face. Women are trying to protect our egos, guys. They understand that like sometimes guys get bad news like I don't want to see you and they want to like, you know, unalive a bunch of people. So they're trying to do stuff covertly, hoping that you get it. All right. So with that said, let's add her to the screen. Let's see what she has to say. This is girl language. language. What we say versus what we really mean. Number one, when we ask you if you're hungry, it really means we're hungry but we don't want to go out and get food or make food ourselves and eat in front of you alone. We really want you to say you're hungry too so that we can get something together or make something together. So yeah, so that's that's a that's a, a pretty well known one. But yeah, if a woman says to you, uh, "Hey, or, hey, babe, are you hungry?" She's not she's not literally logistically asking if you yourself are actually hungry. She's using it. It's like think of like women's comments to you as like an onion, right? The top layer is what she's saying, but under what she's saying are these other layers that were, that's what she's really trying to say. So when she says to you, yeah, hey, babe, like, like, are you hungry right now? She's actually hoping you're going to say, I am hungry. Let's go get food. So that way she can be fed too. Again, I get it, guys. It's frustrating. Why can't they just come out and say, hey, babe, I'm hungry. We've been trying to figure that out for years. I'm still trying to come up with an answer. But in the meantime, just know when she says this, that's what she means. Number two, when we say, if you want to, we really mean I really don't want to, but if you really want to, I will with you, but it's because you want to. And if you were to ask me, I'd probably say, yeah, if you want to, but I really don't want to. <laughs> I'm sorry. The, the understand when women say things sometimes, it's not logical. She says, if a guy said, if I say, if I say, well, if you want to, that means, you know, blah, 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 blah. But if you were to ask me if I want to do the thing, the answer is no. But we're already asking the woman if she wants to do the thing. So, again, you got to just understand girl logic and girl emotional talk. Sometimes it's not going to always make logical sense to a guy. But if you were to break it down, because, again, I've been studying this stuff for years. So I have to, like, dive deep into, like, what? why would a woman do that? And the bottom line is this, right, is that a woman doesn't want to feel as though she's stopping you from having a good time doing something. So if you are set on doing a certain thing, for her to get in the way would be worse of a crime to her than if she were to just say to you, I don't want to do the thing. And then like, you know, at that point she said what she wanted to say and you, she, you now know where she's thought thinking from, but she's thinking, but now he's not going to want to do the thing because it's, it's what I said. And I'm the one that's affecting if he's going to do this thing or not. So it's the thing of where they're taking into consideration the fact that you want to do a thing, right? So this is one of those things where I found like, if, if a woman's like, you know, well, if you want to do it, I'll be like, you know, well, Hey, I mean, I want to do the thing. Are you, are you down to do it as well? Because if you don't want to, Hey, you know what? I, I'm an introvert. I will do the thing myself and will not hurt your feelings. It's like, for example, I've had women where like, I'm a big movie guy, right? I love going to the movies. And so early on when I'm dating, sometimes I'll go to a movie like every week. I got an AMC pass. I'll go nonstop. Right. And so the woman will start going on and going. And then at some point I'll just be like, Hey, like, do you want to go to this movie? And they'll be like, well, I mean, if you want to go, because I study this stuff, I know what that means. And I'll say, well, yeah, you know, I want to go see this movie, but Hey, you know what? Just cause we're in a relationship. Don't think that you have to do every single thing that I want to do. If you want to stay home and do some other activity, then I won't be hurt by it. That's totally fine. I find after doing that two or three times, then a woman will start to be like, you know what? I I'm cool. If you just go ahead, like they won't say like, well, I don't want to do it. They'll be like, you know, you go ahead and do the thing. I'm going to just stay here. And I'm like, okay, great. Thanks. Cause I'm like, I just don't want to be stopped from doing the thing. So sometimes women need to hear from their guy that as long as they're not stopping us from doing the thing, we're fine with them not doing the thing with us, you know? But again, when you first start out, they're probably going to talk like this. You just have to know what that means. Anyway. But I'm going to do it for you. Number three might seem like a pretty easy one, but a lot of people don't get it. If she is ignoring you or keeping her distance away from you, she is upset at you, but she doesn't want to tell you and she wants attention from you. And she wants you to do the dirty work to figure it out yourself because she doesn't have to want to reiterate it. She wants you to learn the hard way and figure it out and then act accordingly after that. And now, I'm pretty sure every guy that just heard that was like, Harry, that's frustrating and annoying. Like, so she's telling us that if she's ignoring us in a way, it means that she's mad and upset and she wants to talk about it, but she wants us to bring it to her attention. Like, what's that about? That's so freaking stupid. 
I didn't say that some of this stuff is not frustrating and that it, it, it doesn't logically make sense. But again, you got to get out of your logical head. Start thinking. If you start thinking in girl world brain matters, right? You got to start thinking about if they if they're if they're an emotional person, if they're a person that runs on their emotions, then how is that affecting their decision making process? So. Women are emotional thinking people, right? And they care not only about their emotions, but the emotions of the other person. If she's upset and she knows that coming to you to talk about it is going to make you upset and cause you to have the same turmoil that she's currently feeling, then she doesn't want to bring that to you until you're ready to deal with it. And in her head, the only way she's going to know if you're ready to deal with it is if you come to her and say, babe, what's wrong? Let's talk about it. Right now, again, that might not be the path that you want to go. I'm just letting you know in girl language, that's how that functions. And other women know this. Other women know they see another woman upset. They go up to her. Hey, you want to talk about what's wrong? The woman will say, oh, I don't want to talk about it. The other girl knows that's not true. No, go ahead. Talk about it. I'm open to it. Now the first girl knows she must be really open to it because she's pushing me to talk about it. Okay, I'll talk about it. Well, because blah, 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 blah. So I've learned as the guy, just like if, if for whatever reason, the woman I'm with is like being silent, a little bit distant. I, as much as I hate having to be the one to bring it to them to talk about it, because I'm like, I could be fine. Just They could ignore me all day. I'll go do my own thing, whatever. I know for the betterment of the relationship that if I don't say something now, long term, there's going to be hell to pay. So I'd rather just go up to them at the moment and say like, hey, is everything okay? Well, I'm, I'm fine. I'll be like, babe, look, I know you're not okay. There was a situation that happened like, let's just talk about it. I'm open. I don't have any ego about it. If there's something that's bugging you, let me know. We can talk about it. I have to say that like, again, two or three different times because most women have had the experience of trying that with previous dudes. And then as soon as they start talking that talk, the guy's like, oh, that's not a thing. You didn't understand what I was doing, isn't it? And then they, we want to we logic our way into why the way that they're feeling is bull crap. Women don't want to be told that how they're feeling is bull crap because that makes them feel less heard and understood by you. So instead, if they're telling you some stuff, even if you disagree with it, you can be like, I mean, I'm sorry that I'm sorry you're feeling that way. And, you know, I didn't know that these actions were making you feel that way. Like, let's talk about that some more. At some point down the line, you can start saying, OK, well, you know, I understand why you feel that way. You know, my intention when I said this thing or did this thing, I didn't know you were going to take that joke a certain way. And here's why. But I can see now how you feel that way. So let's talk about what we can do going forward. Boom. Now she feels heard. She talked about the thing. But, yeah, girl language is going to start with. I'm going to just ignore him. He's going to eventually get the feeling tone of blah, 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 blah. And so many dudes are oblivious or just like, oh, she's being silent. Well, I'm going to play my video games. Do, 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 do. And then they completely ignore her. And then it gets worse later. You know? Number four, when we send you something on Instagram DM or on TikTok through text or whatever it may be, if we send you something, whether that be a restaurant, whether that be an activity, whether that be a meal, we want you to take action and book that restaurant, book that activity, buy the things for a meal, or ask us if we wanna do it to that night, that week, whatever it may be, but we wanna do that. We're putting it in plain sight, throwing it at you so that you take initiative. Now, what's interesting is guys will be like, man, I always have to plan all the dates and I always have this and that. If you start actually paying attention to the things that women are sending you when you're trying to date them, this will start to happen. They'll send you like a random restaurant. Or they'll, you'll, they'll send you like a video, like a TikToker eating like a noodle place or reviewing something on like Yelp or like, oh, I went to this thing today and blah, blah, blah. I did this event. And you're thinking like, oh, that's such a nice TikTok. Do, 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 do. No, idiot. She's telling you she wants to do the thing without telling you because here's the thing. And this frustrates guys because like, why don't they just say the thing? Women connect to you more when they feel like you're getting them. And so when she, her sending the thing to you that she wants to do is already a big thing for her to say, like in, in her girl way, I want to do this thing. She doesn't want to have to spell out every single thing for you because she wants to have the feeling of like, oh, he just took me to this restaurant. He totally gets me. I sent him the thing and he just next, you know, he planned the whole thing out and he did the, the arrangements and set up the reservation. Oh my God. Like that's what they want to feel. So don't expect women to spell things out for you because the, the way that they're going to feel more connected to you is if they're able to hint things at times and you just get it, which is why if you watch more of my videos, you'll start to know the kind of things that women are due to do that. And then you'll be like the guy that stands ahead of like, most of the guys she's ever dated, because you're just like, he just gets me. He knows how to touch me like this. He knows to plan these things over here. He knows a little surprise I like. And all you're doing is just listening to the words she says. You know what my thing is that I'm really, really great at? I will have conversations with women that I'm dating, for example, like on like month two, you know? Oh yeah, I always wanted to go to this place and that. I will plan that date out for like, three months later, or she'll mention some random thing she saw at a store. She wanted to get like some little doodad. I'll get that and give it to her like a month or two later, sometime after we got into the relationship. Like I listen 
all the time. I have a uh, my my phone here. I have the the Notepad app. When I'm dating somebody, I'll, in conversations, I'll just pick up a phone and take random notes. Okay, she likes this band. Okay, she wants to go to this comedy store. Okay, she wants this restaurant, and I'll keep that on reserve. So I have a list of things to go to if I'm running out of ideas. Like this doesn't have to be hard, guys. And women are trying to help you, but again, in their own way. We are giving you all the cues, all the clues, everything to act accordingly and to pursue that. Last but not least, number five, if we ever say, no, it's okay, you don't have to, we really mean do it, please do it. I would really love for you to do it. I'm gonna say it's okay, but realistically, I really, really, really want you to do it. So please ignore me ever saying you don't have to because you really should. So whether that be, I should get you flowers and you say, and us girls say, no, it's okay, you don't have to. No, give them, like buy them for me tomorrow. I wanna show up at home with them already there. Whether that be you offering to get us a car to take us home and we say, no, it's okay, I can get it. No, 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 no. Order that car home. We really want you to. We want you to be that gentleman. We want you to pursue those actions that you state. Please, we're just saying it out of the goodness of our hearts that you don't have to, but we want you to. And that's the thing right there is that women, women want you to want to do the thing that they're telling you in the moment, oh, no, 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 don't do, don't do. Now, again, you got to look at how women communicate with each other. In women's world, they're not trying to push their agenda on any other woman friend of theirs because that feels like force. Women are all about community. And if you're forcing a thing, then the person is like, they feel like they have to do a thing and people don't want to feel like they have to do a thing because it's a whole thing, right? So when women come to you, like, like to her point, like right, you might be like, I've done this, for example, I've been on dates before, right? Where it'll be like the third date. Now the first two dates, I've already paid for. And this is the point where women start feeling like they can be a bit more generous or they're thinking like, if they don't pay their half or whatever, like I'm going to be judging on them or whatever. And I'm not because I'm like, they're going to do other things that I want. It, me paying for a $20 meal is not the biggest deal, right? So going to date, bill comes and I'll get the bill and I'll put my card in there and the purse and the woman, to be fair, she's showing her true colors of like, I am down to be a supportive partner in this situation, right? But that doesn't mean that they necessarily want to do that in the moment. So she might very well be like, you know, oh, hey, I'll get my half. And I'll be like, you know, nope, don't worry, I got it. At this point, a lot of women will come back and say, no, 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 it's okay. I totally get it. Now, at this point, I don't do back and forths. Like, I'm not going to be the guy saying, oh, no, I got to go. Are you sure? Blah, blah, blah. So at this point, I'll be like, okay, look, um, I'm totally fine getting this bill. If you want to contribute, you can, but it is not necessary. Let me know now. And at that point, they're like, oh, okay, well, thanks. Yeah, because I'm not doing this back and forth. But the point is, like, women will do that. They'll be like, because they're thinking, again, you might be doing it out of the kindness of your heart, or are you doing it out of obligation? And women don't want you to be doing things just because you feel obligated to do it versus, oh, he just generally cares enough about me to want to do this thing for me. Okay, great. And so, again, it's one of those things that women don't have to experience that with you a few times before they realize, like, oh, when you say you're going to do a thing, you're going to handle the situation. You're going to pay for a thing that you're going to actually do it. But in the beginning, they're going to very much do the whole like, oh, no, 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 no. Oh, no, I'm telling you. What was it? It's a blah, 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 blah. Just to, I mean, they're not they're subconsciously to see if like, are you really trying to do the thing that you're saying you're actually trying to do, you know? So she gives some very great advice on that aspect of things, right? And so her other video here, let's see what this is. This, this video is uh, things girls do when they don't like you. So this is another example of like language or things that women are going to do that aren't going to directly tell you that they're not interested. But as a guy, the earlier that you're able to catch on to what these things are, you'll be less butthurt. Well, you'll probably be butthurt. But in the moment, you'll, at least you'll be like, oh, she's saying this thing. So she doesn't like me. Oh, that sucks. But I don't have to waste my time chasing her anymore. So that's great. And that's what we want. We want you to be able to cut back on the amount of time you're talking to a woman that is not actually interested. All right. So let's go ahead and get into that video. Here we go. What girls do when they don't like you? And I made one the other day as to things guys do when they don't like you, and it made total sense. We had a lot of people asking about things girls do when they don't like you, so here goes. Number one is when they invite you to group activities. If they do not want to hang out with you on your own or go on a date or just do one-on-one -on -one things, it's because they want to put you in the friend zone. They want to keep you around, but they don't like you like that. So they're going to bring you to friend group things, but not one-on-one. -on -one. Oh, God, I have flashbacks. When I was in college, I had a crush on this woman. Uh, and at some point, I finally told her that I liked her. And then, you know, things started getting weird. We've been friends for like three years, but now things are weird all of a sudden. And I remember I invited her to the movies one day and she was on the phone like, uh, 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 well, uh, mm, oh, okay. I show up to the movie theater and she's there. 
And she has a friend of hers that was admittedly a mutual acquaintance of ours. But yeah, she had a mutual friend there, a, a female friend there. And right off the bat, as soon as I saw that, I was like, oh, this isn't a romantic date. Like even back then when I was in my simpish ways, I knew this is not meant to be romantic. Like crap. So yeah, anytime guys, anytime you ask a woman out and she's like, oh, that sounds great. Hey, can I bring in so-and-so? That automatically means she's not trying to be romantic with you. She doesn't find you interesting enough to be by herself with, and you need to re reject automatically. She's like, let's bring somebody, I'll bring somebody along. Your response should be like, I'm not interested. You know what? Let's do it another time when you are able to do it solo. I'll talk to you later. And then follow up her number, delete from her phone, because she's not interested, and you saved yourself some time. So for them, it helps them so it doesn't get too romantic or you won't try to make a move because it's in a group setting. Yeah. Number two, if a girl says this, she's probably avoiding you. She's probably, it's basically a way of saying I'm busy for, in a guy sense. But if a girl says to you, there's just a lot going on right now in my life. Like I'm going through a lot. Yes, sometimes it could mean that there's actually a lot going in her life, but if she wanted to, she would make time for you. No one really has time. But a guy would say I'm busy, and a girl likes to normally say, there's just a lot going on in my life. And it means I'm trying to avoid you. Sorry, I do not want to prioritize you in my time right now. Women that like you help you. Women that don't won't. And women that don't will have a bevy of excuses. So ever know sometimes, guys, you meet a girl, maybe you met her on a dating app, maybe you met her in person, you guys had a good rapport going, you go on a first or second date, things to you seem to be going good, and then you ask her out for that third date. Ah, you know what? My life is just so busy right now. I just I just have so much going on. I just, I just, ah. Uh. So she didn't realize that her life was busy when she went on the first couple of dates or when she put herself on a dating app. But now, too busy. That is a woman that is trying to, in, a, in her own way, ghost you and let you know that she's not actually interested because women that are hella busy still manage to get married and have spouses with guys that they fully like. Amazing, right? So take that into consideration. Number three, if she avoids any hangouts that you ask. So if you ask her to do something on Thursday, and this could even be a week before prior or it could be a few days, whatever. If she comes up with an excuse time after time, that excuse is just popping up. We are making excuses. We are finding different ones because she doesn't want you to leave her life completely, but she does not like you. So she's gonna be coming up with an excuse. And if that keeps happening, oh boy, yeah. No, it's never gonna, the hangout is never actually gonna happen. And women will keep you in limbo because again, they're, see, they're, they're using female communication that they've used with other females who would get that if they're saying like, hey, hey, Becky, want to come to the party? Oh, Cheryl, I'd love to go, but oh, but my parents might be coming into town or oh, you know what? Like, I, it depends on if my boss is going to keep me over. Then the other girl knows instinctually, oh, she's not going to show up. Like she's she's telling me this in a nice way because she doesn't actually want to go to the party, but she's not going to say that to my face. So she's just going to give these excuses. Girls would get that. Guys are like, well, I mean, she said that we could hang out some other time, even though she could make today. So that must mean she actually wants to hang out. No, it doesn't. Like, no, it, it means that she's trying to hold you off and not hurt your feelings, but that if she would show up for a hangout, she would make it happen. She's not because she doesn't like you, but doesn't want to hurt your feelings. All right. So again, you know what it is. It'll suck to hear it, but at least you'll know earlier than later. Number four, if she's not matching your reply time. So if a girl likes you, she sees when you reply and how fast you reply and she'll kind of match that. If she doesn't at all by any means... She doesn't like you. She's not thinking into it. She's not reading too far into it. So I'm sorry. She doesn't care. Now, the caveat, of course, as I, you know, you see my videos, guys, uh, if they're doing a pull away test, but even that, that usually happens because up to that point, you are probably putting too much energy into the situation to where it feels like too much. And she might be like not responding right away because she's trying to pull back and try and hoping that you're going to leave her alone for a little bit. Right. But overall, she's correct. Yeah. Women make time to answer texts of guys that they like and that are, they're trying to see. And so if that's not happening outside of the situation where you were maybe texting too much and she needs you to back off a bit, that like, yeah, chances are it means that she's probably not highly interested and you need to like leave her alone. And you'll oftentimes find that if you leave her alone enough, then if she did have some kind of interest there, she'll start texting you back more repeatedly because she's coming to you at that point. But you trying to constantly be on her is gonna more often than not cause this to happen. Now, this is a funny one. If she tells you or suggests to hook up with somebody else, one of her friends, somebody at a bar, whatever, if she pushes it out there and just suggests it, 
or if somebody else says it and she encourages it, she doesn't like you. We are territorial human beings. If we like you, uh uh-uh, honey, you are not getting with anyone. I want you in my space. You're not going in anybody else's. So if they suggest it, they don't like you. So yeah, so if this is for you guys that are like, if you're dating somebody or you're talking to somebody, like say, especially you guys that are like, you're you're talking to a woman, you're not sure if she likes you or not because she's flirty, but maybe she's not going out with you, or you guys have like done some touchy feely stuff, but like she's not trying to commit anytime soon, and she brings up like, oh, what about my best friend? Like, oh, you know, she's she'd be a great player, or you should you should keep going out there and still talking to other girls. A woman that is highly interested is not trying to push you off to other women. So if that's happening. Red bells, red alarms should start going off like, oh, crap, she's not that interested. Now, another caveat. During the dating phase, you should already be talking to other women anyway. But if she's trying to push the agenda, don't get mad. Don't be like, but I want to be with you and blah, 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 blah. If anything, you should be like, oh, well, I mean, I'm still seeing other people besides you. Like, let that be the narrative you put forth. Chances are her brain, her brain will probably be like, oh, that, that's great. I, I guess like, yeah, we, we're just, we're just hanging out. We're just hanging on right now. We're just doing whatever. So, you know, this isn't serious right now. So obviously what, like let her have that narrative since she's already trying to push it anyway. I have found sometimes that doing that will make her start thinking about, but do I want that to actually be what's going on? And then next thing I know, she's the one coming to me asking about, well, so, I mean, I know that you said you're seeing other people. I know blah, 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 but really how I feel is blah, 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 blah. Like it's amazing how that'll turn around if you're not giving the impression that you're trying to make this a thing. It's weird. Last but certainly not least, if she picks arguments on the littlest things, if you say something and or act a certain way or take your socks off weirdly or put your shoes somewhere and she picks an argument time after time consistently of something that you do that's the littlest thing, she doesn't like you. She's annoyed. She has the ick, honestly, quite frankly. So everything mm-hmm. that you do that's a little bit different We'll give her that egg and it's just going to be causing an argument and she doesn't like you. So I'm sorry I spilled the tea. And I, and, and looking back, I've definitely had this happen before where it's like, you know, you might meet a girl and at first she seems very interested. She seems like she, she wants to go out with you. You guys are having some great dates. And then you'll notice there'll be that one date where you go on and she's like, oh, why'd you wear that shirt? Oh, why are you eating that way? That's so funny. Oh, God, why'd you order that food? Oh, my God, it smells so bad. Oh, what's with this bump in your car? Like, you'll start hearing that kind of stuff on a date. And you're like, I thought this girl liked me. We were having a good time. And all of a sudden, she's nitpicking. She's nitpicking because she's hoping it's going to start a fight that's going to allow her to be like, oh, see yourself, whatever. And then she can, like, say it's your fault that she didn't want to see you anymore. That's what's really going on, you know? So at the point that that starts happening, guys, recognize, oh, crap, like, I can get my way out or I need to just end the state now and get out while the getting's good, you know? But yeah, so hopefully some of what that girl has shown you in terms of women's language towards you can give you a better idea about women speak for one and also the ways in which women are communicating that are in the hopes of either you getting something out of them or like them trying to get rid of you, you know? It's always good for you as a guy to constantly study up on female communication because it is drastically different from ours at times and you might be not be aware that a woman is actually showing you interest or disinterest based on your level of knowledge about that, you know? So with all that said, we got questions in the chat. We're gonna go into the main topic, we're gonna get into all that stuff. But first, as always, I need to refill some water, so we'll be right back. Hey guys, Harry Wilmington here, and I just want to tell you really quickly about some of the awesome eBooks that I have available at the website. So to start off with, we have my brand new book, Stop Losing Women, which is based off of my previous podcast, and it's over 284 pages of life-changing advice for your dating life. You're going to discover in the span of these pages, the ins and outs of how to become more confident, the do's and don'ts of how to attract women, how to pace yourself during the dating process, and ultimately what it truly takes for you to be a more confident dater, so that way you can get out there, attract women, and more importantly, stop losing women, okay? Uh, The other ebook that I have on my website is called No Girls For You, The Ultimate Guide to Losing the Girl of Your Dreams. This is the first book that I ever wrote, and simply put, It is a 12 chapter masterpiece that is designed to, in a very funny way, mind you, uh, guide you through the ins and outs of why all the things you're trying to do right now to attract women can actually cause you to lose them. I mean, things like being the nice guy, uh, overextending yourself, getting too many gifts, too many compliments, and a variety of other things that you may think as a guy I should be doing this funny book's going to help you figure out once for all why you should not do those things and how to better yourself instead. So be sure to check that book out as well. Uh, the other book that's been very popular at my website 
is called texting like a boss. This is where, for all you guys out there that have problems texting women or don't understand why she starts off so chummy in the terms of the texting things, and then she starts to kind of go away and you can't figure out what's going on or why, or you're not an efficient enough texter to be able to actually get dates by way of texting. Well, this book is gonna give you 21 do's and don'ts that are tried, true, and tested, so that way you can get the results that you want with women when you're texting them and ultimately not do the wrong things that are going to cause her to eventually ghost you in the texting room all right so check that book out at the website lastly my my other popular book that i have there is called 10 steps to winning back your ex the step-by-step no-nonsense guide to reconnecting with an old flame regardless of who ended the relationship and so for you guys that are like hey i think i lost a great one and she she left me and i want to get her back or you might have been the guy that's like hey i dumped her and then i realized i made a mistake and i want to get her back well this book covers both of those scenarios in a very detailed step-by-step way that is designed to allow you to figure out what you did wrong how you can show up better and the sequence of events you need to go through in order to effectively win back the woman that you are no longer with. So if that's if these things sound like things that'll be helpful to you, then definitely go to introvertdatingsuccess.com, click on the products tab, where you can find a summary of all these books as well as my various programs, and they will be more than happy in helping you figure out whatever part of the dating journey you're on, so that way you will not be confused, and you will ultimately be able to have the dating life that you want. So check those out at the website say hi welcome back so just a little behind the scenes notes guys these are the lights that i use to like do all the various lights that you have set up here i have four of these but i only use three so this one's about to die replaced it but this is this is what they look like so this is why they're shining all bright on the sides here it's amazing the production value you can get when you just get some simple lights off amazon anyway so we're back and so now before i get to the main crux of the show i'm going to answer a question and oh geez, we got a lot of things for the season. Instead of this, that's why some of them I did that one. Okay, great. So we have a question here. Question in the chat goes, Hey Harry, love your content. Thank you. Uh, in regard to online dating or just talking to a girl after getting her number, what do you recommend a guy should say to get a woman's attention authentically? I find that asking a question, not hi, how are you doing? Uh, hi, how are doing, doesn't work a lot anymore. I also find myself exhausted, wasting hours to come up with a pickup line she probably has already heard. Uh, so you saw a little ad that just ran, right? So you can get my uh, Texting Like a Boss book at the website, introvertdatingsuccess.com. It will help you immensely about the with the do's and don'ts of how to text. It's stuff that that's based on my the ways that I effectively text. But to answer your question in the meantime, uh, to the first part, if you already got her number, then if like if you're talking to a girl, like you met her at a party or whatever, and you got her number, you already got her attention. So if I were to hit her up, I'd probably say something like, hey, this is so-and-so for the party. You know, what's been going on? And then I'd go right into asking her on a date because we're not trying to use the phone to just chit chat and build rapport. Like the goal of the, getting the phone number is to be able to hit her up for a date. And I have found personally that most women I've dated have appreciated that. Like I've heard the stories of so-and-so got me, got his number or got my number and then just texted me for like three weeks straight and then never got around to ask me out. Or by the time he got around to ask me out, I was already kind of talking to somebody else who was quicker to ask me on a date. So if you get the number, what you do is you wait three or four days and then you hit her up and say, hey, so-and-so, it's so-and-so. Oh, hey, so-and-so, well, it's nice. So glad you hit me up. Yeah, great talking to you. By the way, and you ask for a date. As far as online dating goes, because because you don't know the person initially, obviously that first line is going to be very, very important. I talk about that extensively in my smart digital dating program, which goes into the ins and outs of how to do online dating. But suffice to say, the easiest way I found is assuming they have decent pictures on their profile. Most women have like a vacation picture or they have a picture there at a party somewhere or they're you know doing some kind of interesting activity or they're in some kind of like sexy little dress or whatever. So they try to give you a plethora of things to comment on, either by way of their pictures or by way of whatever they've said in their in their bio. Pick something from their bio or pick a picture of some kind that you can make commentary on in a funny way. 
That's the easiest way I found to open up women on online dating because then it gets them laughing. It gets them saying, oh, he, this guy's different. He's not just hitting up saying, hi, how are you? Or, oh, wow, you look so hot. Never use, never use, wow, you're so hot. Do not compliment their looks at all when you are talking to them on Messenger in the online dating app. That is the easiest way for her to realize you're just like all the other simps out there and she will get rid of you, all right? So find something you can comment on and then make that be your first comment. You can, in terms of the, the banter time, you could banter anywhere between like an hour or so to like four or five days. But within that time frame, you should be asking for a date. Like the ultimate goal of the phone, whether you're it's a woman whose number you got at a party or whether it's somebody you got online, the goal is to get the date. Also, do not do the transition of, hey, we're talking online on this dating app. Let's go and talk on the phone. Give me your number. I have found it's easier to get a date from a woman by just asking her directly on the dating app and then don't ask for her number until after you've had that first date. I found women typically appreciate that a lot more because they're not going to have to worry about like, you just don't want, you don't want to throw out anything that's going to cause your barrier to entry to be harder. So you're already on a platform. You're already talking to her. Just ask for the date and then go on the date. If you have a good time, you can exchange numbers. If you don't, you don't have to worry about her hitting you up when you don't want her to and vice versa for her. All right. But yeah, ask her out on the date. Either way, ask her on a date on that dating app or ask her out on the phone. You're trying to ask for the date. You're not trying to do extensive rapport building on the date. I mean, on the phone, which I talk about extensively again in the uh, texting like a boss book, which is available at the website. So be sure to check that out. But hopefully in the meantime, that helps you out. All right. So let's go ahead and get into the meat of the show. We are now at the at the uh, main event. And this is uh, what if she's afraid of love? So here's how I came up with the idea of doing this show. I was listening to the radio one day and the weekend came on and that song Die For You with him and Ariana Grande. And in the song, he says, you know, oh, well, she's a, she's she's scared of love. And she he's done several songs where he's like, oh, the girl's afraid of love. Oh, my God. Like, she doesn't want to fall in love with me because her past, blah, blah, blah. But there's so many other song, singers besides him that talk about this concept. And the idea is basically the guy's thinking, wait a minute, she's not falling in love with me, but it's because she's been hurt in the past and she's afraid and she doesn't want to get hurt again by me, even though I'm a nice guy. And so I want to try to convince her and cajole and this, this, and that. And so I want to talk about that because, you know, we listen to this media and then as guys, we think logically, oh, well, The Weeknd was able to talk to <laughs> The Weeknd, who's hella rich and has a bunch of albums out, is able to talk to a girl and say, I know you're scared of love, but hey, you don't have to be because I'll be there. And then the girl's like, I totally will be. Thank you, Weeknd. You saved me from not having love anymore and for being able to open myself up. And that's not how it's going to work in real life. So I want to talk about that. Right. So to start off with this idea that women are afraid of love. We'll just say that is a thing that can happen, which we'll get into in a minute. But more often than not, that is not what's happening. What's happening is you go on a couple of dates and then you start to notice it's been like maybe two months and she's not giving you lovey-dovey eyes anymore. Or, you know, you've been the one that keeps going to her asking for a relationship. And then she just comes out and says, I just I just I'm just scared of love and I've been hurt in the past, blah, 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 blah. What's going on is she's not interested in a relationship with you. Like she, you, for whatever reason, whether you were coming on too strong, you were being too forceful, you were asking for a relationship too many times, you were overly emotional. She went from thinking this could be a prospective person that's I want to date to like, I'm no longer interested, but now I don't know how to get out of this and I don't want to hurt his feelings. And he keeps wanting to have a stronger thing and be in a relationship and I don't want to do that. So, oh my God, I'm so scared of love. And women are very good at telling us stories that convince us of the narrative they're trying to push, i.e., oh, well, uh, my, my last ex hurt me. But if you really think about the logic of that, right? She had an ex, which means that she was able to fall in love. In fact, most women have had multiple exes. So even if they've had multiple exes coming to you, they're not suddenly scared of love. It didn't work out with those other guys for whatever reason, whether it was her fault or their fault. But suffice to say, she clearly has shown the ability to fall in love. So at that point, it's not that she's scared of love. It's that she doesn't want to be in a relationship with you at this point in time. And she just didn't know how to voice it. All right. That is more often than not, what is going on. And there's reasons behind that, which I'll, which I'll talk about. But basically it's like, again, as guys, sometimes we're trying to force our agenda. We're moving things too fast. We're texting and calling all the time. We're trying to see her every day. We're trying to ask her how she feels and trying to emote and try to let her know how we feel. And then that causes her to start to lose interest. And the sad part is most women don't get this because a woman would be like, but I should like him. 
I should want a relationship. He's a nice guy. He treats me well. He always wants me there. He's always texting me good morning. Like, how do I not want him? And so even they don't understand that subconsciously, all that stuff is screaming, he's needy, he's desperate, he's put me on a pedestal that's too high, he's wanting more from me right now than I'm, and we're not at the same level yet in terms of like our feelings for each other, this is a lot to handle, and I want to be out. And then you get the excuse of, I'm just scared of love. Now, let's say for, let's say for instance, though, she is afraid of love. You know, she had a traumatic past. And she had an ex that abused her and then another ex that abused her. And now she comes to you and you're like, I'm not going to be abusive. I'm going to care. And she's like, the last two guys said that also. And I got into a relationship with them. And now they're, they they abuse me. So you're saying the same thing. And he's saying, this feels weird. On the off chance that that's her situation, chances are she's probably not a good candidate today anyway, because she's going to have a bunch of stuff that comes up that's going to be triggers for her. And so you're going to not text her one day. Oh my God, you didn't text me this going blah, 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 blah. Or you're going to like move your hand in some way to move it like, you know, oh, that was so great. And she's going to think you're about to hit her. Like that is not a good situation to get into because I'll tell you as a guy, you're going to think I'm going to go in there. I'm going to show I'm different from other guys. I'm going to be the superhero and it's going to wear you out only to find out that as, as good of a guy as you are, she still has that trauma and therefore she still has that viewpoint that just because you're nice now, You've been dating her for a year or two. Doesn't mean that eventually, if she gets super serious with you, it's not going to happen. So either, even with that kind of woman, it, it's if she's thinking I I'm afraid of love because she's legit gone through some stuff. That doesn't make your experience of dating her easy, and therefore she'd be out. Like you can feel empathy for her, you can feel sorry for her, but that does not mean you have to date her because you're not going to be the guy that comes along and changes her world. You know. Now, with that said. I have notes here. So um, with this kind of woman, the woman comes along, you guys have been dating each other for two weeks or so and so, and she throws out the, well, I don't know if I'm ready for a relationship yet. There could actually be a chance of getting this woman into a relationship. And there was a movie on Netflix that, that demonstrated this perfectly. And it was a couple that they met. They hook up a couple of times. They both just gotten out of relationships. And so they were flirty with each other and they were hooking up. And neither person was trying to push towards a relationship. And then for the third date, dude was just like, hey, we should like go to Costa Rica or something like that. Some somewhere down in um, uh, South, uh, like Mexico, America, wherever like that. But they were like, oh, no, let's go. We should do this trip. And she was like, that's weird for a third date, but okay. And they get down there and then C-19 happened. And there's a, it's, it's, a, it's a whole movie, right? Because the dude was documenting on his phone. Like they were stuck. So they're now seeing each other every day. They're waking up to each other. They're, they're hooking up a whole lot, right? But- Throughout the course of the movie, this girl's constantly saying, I don't know, to the camera, I don't know if this is going to be a thing long term. Like, this is supposed to just be like a hookup fling thing to get over my previous situation. Like, I don't know, like, blah, 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 blah. And do the whole time was just like, I'm just here to have fun. He wasn't trying to make anything super serious. He wasn't trying to, hey, we've been hanging out with each other for like three weeks now. Talk about feelings and we should make this thing. We should be boyfriend and girlfriend because we're already spending all this time together. We clearly like each other. Like nothing. He wasn't forcing a single thing and asking her at all to have to be in a relationship. She expressed, well, I, I was in a relationship before and I don't know if I'm ready and I'm kind of scared to be in a relationship again. And he was just like, okay, so we're going to go ride some cars now. We're going to go find some food somewhere. We're going to do some other C-19 activities. Like, what's up? And by the end of the movie, spoiler, guys, I want to know if you're going to sit. So I'm just spoiler alert right now. Spoiler. At the end of the movie, she decides to get with him. Oh, my God, how'd that happen? How it happened is he followed the rule that I tell you guys all the time, which is do not force it. Whether you're with a woman that is all about relationships, she's telling you from day one, I want a relationship, and I want this, this, and that, or be it a girl that's like, I don't know, I'm scared of love, I'm not sure, blah, blah, blah. The, the rules remain the same, which is you do not force this to have to be a thing. Your job as the guy is to show up, show her a fun time, give her some good hookups, some laughs, whatever like that. Keep things cordial, keep things jovial, keep things lively. It is not to be super serious. It is not to try to get her to be convinced as to why all the reasons you're a great guy to be in a relationship with. Your job is to show up and show out and be consistent. And she, of her own accord, will start to get 
that you are a good guy. She will start to get, oh, he says the things that he's going to do, and then he does them. Oh, we have great hookups in the bedroom. Oh, my God, I actually have a great time with him laughing and being fun. Oh, I had a day where I was on my period and couldn't hook up with him, and he just said, totally fine. He's actually able to listen to me, tell my sob stories about my past, and he's not getting overly emotional about it. And then he's, I'm going from that to like him making things fun and lively. Like, oh, my God, this is great. And even women that say initially, well, I just want this to be a fling or a friends of benefit situation. If you're being consistent and doing all the, the things you need to do as the guy to show up in her world in an authentic way, but in a way that is not super serious and that's not pushing any kind of particular agenda, you will find that most women across the board will give you what you want, which is the relationship. You get the relationship by not forcing the relationship. Even with women that are, are coming along saying, well, I don't know if I want to do it. I'm not sure if I want to be some super serious again. Okay, fine. You're a free agent. You win either way. Either She's going to want to get in a relationship with you, in which case, great, you're with a great girl, you're hooking up all the time, you're having a good time together, it's fantastic. Or she's like, I don't know if I'm ready for a relationship yet because I'm scared of love, blah, 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 blah. You're like, we can keep doing what we're doing, it's totally fine. And then you go out there and talk to other women also. And at some point, she's going to recognize you're doing that and be like, oh, how could you? But wait, why am I mad about him doing that? Like, I told him I don't want to be in a relationship, Like, but maybe I do now. Maybe he's making me feel things that make me think I suddenly want to be in a relationship. Like, oh my God, I need to explore that. And then you give her time to explore those feelings until she comes to the conclusion, you know what, guy? I know I said I didn't want a relationship, but like, are you seeing anybody? Like, what, what, what's your situation now? Like, is, is it just me you're talking to? This is the stuff that will legitimately happen with any girl, but especially ones that are like, I'm afraid of love. If you are just patient, you show up to have fun, and you shut the heck up. It, it, and because again, I've dated women that just got out of like long-term relationships, just got out of marriages where they're like, Hey, Harry. So like, you know, well, I did honestly, we don't even have that conversation because I'm at the point in my dating game now where like, I already know how to show up where I'm not being overly needy. I know how to show up where I'm not consistently in front of her face to where I don't have to have that conversation. But when I was new at this stuff and I was just getting into it, I would have to, have, they would have the conversation. Hey, so just so you know, like, you know, like, you know, I, I don't know if I would be in, in a relationship. I'd just be like, okay, cool. Well, we're just dating right now. So we don't have to make any decisions right now. Like I have to tell them that several times before they came to me and were like, Hey, so like, what are we? Blah, 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 blah. So you got to be the one to understand that you're not going to get your way with women that are afraid of relationships. If you try to sit there and do the guy thing, which is logistically negotiate why it is I'm so great and why you shouldn't be afraid of love and how I'd never harm a fly and you can ask my exes like I'm a ruler, like, because all it's gonna do is make you look like a try hard. And once you look like a try hard, you now look like you're putting her on a pedestal. You're trying to vie for her attention. You're trying to convince her all the ways in which you're the best guy ever. And the only way a woman's gonna, a woman has to feel that. You can't negotiate to a woman that you're the best guy ever. A woman has to feel, based on her experience with you, that you're probably the best guy ever and that her losing you is gonna be a huge loss to her life, you know? And you only get that with time. It takes a woman two to three months to solidify her feelings. It might take four or five months for a woman that's been through trauma or for a woman that's been like, I just, I'm in my hookup era. I don't know if I want to actually settle down with the guy. You got to let it play out. You got to not be hurt by the fact that she hasn't chosen you right away. And more importantly, you got to keep your options open. Keeping your options open is the fastest way to get a girl that's afraid to commit to want to commit to you. And this is, hey, for some of you guys, you're like, I don't want to play games. I don't want to have to act like I have four or five women. You don't have to. The energy that you bring to a situation with a woman will make her feel whether or not you feel like you're a guy that has other options. I have dated plenty of women where they were the only person I was dating. But the energy I always give off is, but if this doesn't work out, I'll be fine. I'm indifferent and I can find somebody else. Just having that energy will take the pressure off a woman, which will now allow her to freely give up her femininity and give her the time to think about you in a more relationship capacity, right? You can't force that on them. You have to keep it open for them to figure that out for themselves. Know what I mean? Lastly, um, I put here, this is a very important note. And again, sometimes guys don't want to hear this, but I'm going to say it anyway. At no time, in the dating process ever, should you be showing more love than she's showing you? Now, I'm not saying you can't feel the same level, but I'm saying if you've noticed in your own dating life, it goes a lot better when a woman thinks that she's at the same level as you or more. 
most of us guys are going to start feeling more feelings for a woman after one or two good dates. It is not wise of you to be showing 85% interest in her when hers is still at a building 65%. Because now she's going to feel like it means that she you're now forcing her to have to feel this 85% that she's not yet at. So even if you're like, day two, that's it. She's the woman for me. She has a two to three month process to go through. So you could be the honest Abe guy that's going to be like, hey, just so you know, I'm not seeing anybody else now and I totally have feelings for you and we should just make this a thing and lose out. Or you could be more understanding of what a woman's journey is in dating and be like, okay, let me not be selfish because you try to push the agenda onto her that you already feeling all these things is actually very selfish because it's not taking into account how women best need attraction to happen to feel those same things. So you go in, you have all the feels, but you know what? I'm going to wait until I know that she gets there. I'm going to look for these certain signs. I'm going to wait for these conversations to come up. I'm going to look through the ins and outs of the two or three months. I'm going to re-examine how I'm actually feeling to see if it's lustful feelings versus actually like caring for this person's feelings. And then by the time I figure all that out, she'll be at a slightly higher level than me. And her being at a higher level of love for you is not a bad thing because you as the guy, part of your logical brain needs to be on, if I get her, can I support her? Can I show her a good time? What am I going to do to sustain this thing long term? So your brain has to now be on your goals and your dreams to be able to support the woman that you so much want, which is why if that's happening, she can bask in her femininity, which is naturally going to make her feel more things for you because she's the more emotional person. So don't look at that as a bad thing when I say at no time should you be showing more love than she's showing. By default, her emotions are going to make her feel more things and want to be more for you. When you try to jump above that, it makes women feel like they're in a dangerous position because men that feel more than them are the ones that are going to try to stalk them down if they leave them or do other harmful things that women do not want to deal with, regardless of how much they say, but love should be 50-50. No, it shouldn't. Like, she should love you more. Real talk. So hopefully that helps you out in terms of like dealing with the whole, or if she says she's afraid of love, I'm scared of love. One, it's probably not that, but if it is, it's probably because of trauma. And more importantly, even women that say that thing, if you come at them the right way, then trust me, they will fall in love with you. It just takes patience. It takes time. It takes understanding. And it takes having the right dating patterns. And some of you nice guys out there might not have the right dating patterns, which is why the whole seminar, a whole free webinar you can go to called Three Nice Guy Dating Patterns That Turn Women Off and What to Do Instead. Plug! So be sure to sign up for that. It is a free webinar at the website as well as checking out my other various ebooks, audiobooks programs, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So hopefully, guys, this helps you out. So that's pretty much all I have for the day. Yes, be sure to get those likes up, guys. Be sure to subscribe to the channel. Push this message out. Uh, I appreciate it. There's been more guys coming to the stream, and a lot more of you guys have been getting the um, – the Introvert Dating Success Academy. Got a lot of great programs at the website, but also I got like 900 something videos on the on the site. So you could spend a day or 10,000 like binging my stuff to start, start to get a, a good idea of what's going on in the dating world. But yeah, if you want like a, a thorough line, a straight A to Z of how to actually get into a relationship, then definitely consider checking out the Introvert Dating Success Academy at the website, all right? Anyway, guys, that is all I got for today. That was a lot. So uh, appreciate you guys that showed up and showed out. And uh, hopefully you guys learned some stuff. For more of these videos, you can go to introvertdatingsuccess.com. You can also go to youtube.com slash Harry Wilmington. I'm also streaming this now on Twitch and on Twitter and on something else, Facebook. There you go. So I'm on a lot of different platforms, guys. Uh, definitely check those stuff out. Check out the website for all the, all the good stuff. And uh, that's all I got for today, guys. Thanks for watching. I'm Harry Wilmington, and I will catch you guys on the next show. Also, guys, if you have any questions you want me to answer on future shows, leave comments on my videos because I read them on the show. You can also write to me directly at harrywilmington at gmail.com. That's it. That's all I got. Catch you guys next time. Peace. You's a bad boy, but you can't stop. Won't stop. Let's you are go. high earning, high value, high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man. You are high earning, high value, high class man. You are 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 high class man.